everybody. I'm glad you've been able to tune in again for another one of our little talks online during this period of lockdown. Uh, glad to say, of course, that uh, the situation is easing a little bit for most of us and we're out, able to get out and about a little bit more. And that's a relief, isn't it? Um, I've been thinking about fellowship and uh, that's one of the things we've been missing out on during lockdown, isn't it? The opportunity of getting together in our meeting halls and enjoying fellowship one with another. I'd like to just explore the thought of fellowship uh, in the scriptures with you because it's a wonderful thing. It's a word we often use, isn't it? Amongst our Christian circles, we refer to fellowship. And uh, it's not just a matter of socially getting together, of course, it's much, much more than that. And I want to try and just pick out a few thoughts regarding that. Let us turn to uh, 1 John chapter 1, where John speaks about fellowship in that chapter. 1 John chapter 1, if we can read that together, I'm reading from the ESV version of the scriptures. 1 John chapter 1 says, That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. May God bless his word to us. It's a lovely portion of scripture and many lessons can be drawn from it. But as I say, I want to just focus particularly on the thought of fellowship. Uh, the word there is kononia and um, it's to do with having in common, sharing in common. And um, I want to just split our subject into three headings. The first being the fellowship of the Godhead, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Uh, secondly, our fellowship with the Godhead. And then thirdly and finally, um, the fellowship that we have with one another. That's the fellowship, of course, we've been missing out on as late, isn't it? And uh, the fact that we've been missing out on that third aspect to some degree during lockdown doesn't mean we should miss out uh, on the second one, which we'll look at together. You know, it's perhaps helpful just to illustrate this with drawing a horizontal line and thinking about that as from eternity to eternity. Never, never broken and never ending. Father, Son and Holy Spirit in that perfect bond of unity and then maybe a vertical line up stemming from that and that's our uh, fellowship with the Godhead and then another horizontal line which relates to our fellowship with one another you know if you break the vertical line then the other top horizontal line our flesh fellowship one with another will also become broken you know, it's, as I say, its origin is in eternity past. And the scriptures give us a little glimpse into that great bond of fellowship, that intimate bond of fellowship that the three persons of the God had had. And I just want to explore one or two scriptures together regarding that. 
Zechariah 13 and verse 7 says, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, against the man who stands next to me, or as some other versions put it, the man that is my fellow. And there we see that great fellowship. And we see the sword that was drawn against the shepherd and the horrific uh, situation that uh, had to come upon the shepherd, upon his son, for uh, judgment on our sin against the man that is my fellow. That word there, that word fellow there is uh, to associate. And we actually only find that word uh, in Leviticus other than in this particular verse. And there, seven times in Leviticus, God legislates there uh, for righteous dealings between a man and his neighbour who were closely associated together. And so we see the power behind that word of association. The scriptures tell us uh, the Father and the Son are so closely bound together that's so intimately uh, close together uh, that John records for us in his gospel that he was in the bosom of the Father. It's the place, of course, that John went, wasn't it? We, re- we read about how he reclined uh, on the Master's bosom. And that's that deep place of affection, that deep place of closeness, nearness. And we see it, don't we, um, in that scripture. Matthew 11 and 27 says, No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. This intimate knowledge for one another uh, resulted in uh, a great delight, didn't it? We remember the voice from heaven that came down and how that the Father delighted in his Son. In Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 29 and 30, it says, When he assigned to the sea its limits, so that the waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master workman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always. What a lovely couple of verses as it records that great creational work. And it's, uh, you assign the sea its limits, the waters, that they might not transgress. And he marked out the foundations of the earth. And I was beside him like a master workman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing in, in him always. And uh, you just picture in your mind, don't you, that great bond, that great harmony Uh, that great unity, that great fellowship of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit working this plan of the creation of the earth and um, and of mankind and the purposes that he has for us. You know, probably one of the cruelest jibes that they they, um, taunted the Lord with was when they said, he trusts in God, let God deliver him now if he desires him. You know, of course, God could have delivered him. It was in the power of God to be able to deliver him, of course. But that wasn't God's will. We sometimes sing, don't we, love stream too deeply flowed. And that was the point, wasn't it? It was God's love for you, God's love for me. It so deeply flowed for us. What a marvellous thing. That even in the face of the jibes that they cast upon the Lord, he delivered let, he trusts in God. Let God deliver him. And the Lord himself could have called down those legions of angels for delivery. But in the face of all those taunts, and in the face of all that power available to him, he went obediently to the cross of shame to bear our sins in his own body upon the tree. Thank God, don't we, for the great love that streamed so deeply for us. And so these are some of the glimpses of that unhindered fellowship that we see between the Father and the Son. But in verse 3 we read from our first chapter in uh, 1 John was, in verse 3 it says, And our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. 
What a marvellous verse that is. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. And it doesn't take, lockdown cannot break that. In fact, you might have even found that during lockdown, you've had an opportunity to actually encourage that fellowship. To develop that fellowship. I hope you have. But certainly lockdown can't break that fellowship. You know, it's a marvellous thing, isn't it? When we read that scripture, that we can share in with that intimate fellowship that they have, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That our thoughts can be filled with the same thoughts of the divine mind. That we can be occupied with the things that occupy the eternal persons. And we give you thanks, give God thanks, don't we, for the revelation that's come to us through the Son, who's chosen us to reveal these things to us. You know, that first revelation that came to us when we came and received the Lord Jesus Christ uh, as our own personal Saviour, and the Spirit of God entered in and showed us things, but we need to develop that, and that will develop as we commune with him and become obedient to his commands. In John's Gospel, John says in chapter 14, manifest that he manifest myself to him. We will come to him and make our home with him. What a massive manifestation that is, that he will manifest himself to us and that he'll make, our, make his home with us. How precious that the Lord wants to do that. You know, that time in Eden's garden, was a precious thing. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. That was a wonderful thing. But we have something so much sweeter because like Calvary lies between. Sin hindered uh, that marvellous relationship that they had in the garden of Eden. And his sin, of course, will be the thing that spoils it for us even today. We read together that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. You see, darkness and light do not mix. Paul says himself, what fellowship has light with darkness? None at all. They don't go together. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Certainly not we're deceiving anyone else, are we? But we're thankful. Oh, so truly thankful for verse 9, where it says, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. And that fellowship with God is restored. You know, daily confession is something we must be careful about. Let's not trifle with sin and let's not allow it to rob our fellowship. Because if it robs our fellowship, then it's going to rob our joy. And verse 4 said to us that our joy may be complete. This is the secret of spiritual joy is that it gives us our strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. A joyful Christian is a strong Christian. Joyful Christians are infectious, aren't they? We love to be in the company. The thing that we've been talking about missing out on. We love it to be in the company of joyful Christians. We're living in days of tension. And at the times of lockdown. And times of trouble. And these things can rob us. Of our joy. Because sin comes in. And it spoils us. But the essence of what Paul John was writing about is that our joy may be filled full. John knew something about the intimate fellowship, didn't he? We've already thought about him reclining on the Lord. And it deepens with experience. If we notice in the opening verses of verse 1 and 2, it says, Which we have heard, 
which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. They heard it from a distance, they drew closer, and finally they handled. In Luke 24 it says, touch me and see. Taking a grip of that hand. Genesis 49 says his arms or his hands are made agile by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob. They came increasingly acquainted with the Lord Jesus, didn't they? Is that our experience? Are we becoming increasingly acquainted with him? Or like John records about Philip says, have I been with you so long and you still do know not me, do not know me, Philip? It's a sad thing, isn't it? That we can go through days, months, years perhaps and uh, we're still not growing to know the Lord and our fellowship is marred by sin. Let's not be content with the distance acquaintance. But he, as the Father, was made manifest to us and he wants to make himself increasingly manifest. Let us be careful that things don't hinder that. Paul pursues the matter of fellowship and shows us that fellowship with the Father will draw us from the world. The two don't go together. For all that is in the world is not from the Father, but is of the world, in chapter 2 of First John and verse 16. If we love the world, we shan't fellowship with the Father, and joy will be in, will, will be conspicuous by its absence. And so we need to be careful because as we've been thinking of this pyramid of the fellowship, then we grow in our joy and that is our strength through our fellowship with the Godhead. Third part of our subject was fellowship in one another. And um, this automatically follows. If we share with him in that fellowship with the Godhead, then we'll automatically uh, have fellowship, a sharing with one another, a communion with one another. It's bound to happen. I mean, what bound Peter and John together? What bound Matthew and James? Such diverse characters. It was surely, wasn't it, their master. It was accompanying him, being with him, finding themselves with him, caused them to have fellowship with one another. You know, John picks up that point in chapter 3 and 16 because he talks about the intimate communion with him. And that's that of laying down ourselves. And it takes us out of our selfish considerations because it makes us willing, willing to lay down our lives for one another. This is the highest of fellowships. What will draw us from the world? Fellowship with the Father. What will lift us from above ourselves? Fellowship with his Son. And so that fellowship, of course, touches every part of our lives and service, doesn't it? Paul picks it up in Colossians 4 and 11. He says, my fellow workers of the kingdom of God, they have been a comfort to me. Lonely Paul, he knew what lockdown was all like. He knew what it was like to be in lockdown. But he took comfort, didn't he, by his fellow workers. And then we find that special joy in service. When Paul writes again, I ask you also, true companion, fellowship together, true companion, yoke fellow. And so we close with this thought of fellowshiping together in service, in conflict, suffering, dependent upon our fellowship with the Father and with the Son. You break the vertical line 
and the horizontal line will be broken too. So as we look forward to meeting together in fellowship, then out of the flow of our fellowship with the Godhead will come the abundance of our desire and fellowship with one and another. And we look forward to that, don't we? And perhaps by the time um, I come to speak to you uh, personally, then uh, we have again fellowship restored one with another in our meeting together.